Let us say we abide in the word of God. And the word of God abides in us. We produce good fruit for the kingdom of God. The love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to look at the subject which is entitled The Ministry of Supplication. Hallelujah. The Ministry of Supplication. The Ministry of Supplication. Hallelujah. Oh, intercession. Say intercession. Yes, because supplication may be a big word which some of us have never heard. One thing which the presence of God does when it, when it comes into our hearts is that it activates a desire to pray. Not only just to pray, but also to pray for others. Hallelujah. I want us to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1 up to verse 4. It says, Therefore I exhort first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men and for kings and all who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is the good and accept for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our of God our Saviour, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. This afternoon, God is telling us that he wants us to be involved in supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. Hallelujah. To supplicate, it's a, it's a, it's a certain type of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. We see the ministry of supplication in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we also see the ministry of supplication in the life of a lady that is called Hannah in the Bible. Let us go to 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. It is the desire of God for you and I to advance in the school of intercession. I don't know whether in the school of intercession you are grade 1 or you are form 6 or you are doing a PhD. I don't know. It's only you and God who knows what level you are in the school of, of supplication. But today I pray that by divine favor and by divine acceleration, you become accelerated in the school of intercession and in the school of supplication. Because there is power in intercession. Hallelujah. There is something which is released when we stand in intercession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read from chapter 1 for the background. I may read quite a couple of verses. But uh, I want you to realize that God wants us to be intercessors. Because when Jesus Christ was here on earth, he operated in the ministry of intercession. Hallelujah. You can't separate our being a royal priesthood from the ministry of supplication or the ministry of intercession. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood. Being priests, it means we are intercessors. Because the purpose of the priesthood in ancient Israel was to intercede for, for the rest of Israel. So since we are a royal priesthood, it means the Spirit of God expects you and I to occupy, I mean to occupy our proper domain as intercessors, as people who are advancing in the ministry of supplication. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 1, it says, Now there was a, a certain man, of Ramathaim Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives, the, the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up 
from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah although the Lord had closed her womb. Although the Lord had closed her what? Her womb. Hallelujah. There are things which God does which are uncomfortable to us as human beings. In this passage of scripture, we meet God closing the womb of a certain specific woman. Hallelujah. I don't know whose womb, physical or metaphoric, is closed today. Maybe it's the womb of your career. Or it's an actual literal womb which is closed. But today I'm here with good news to tell you that we have got a God who don't only closes but he also opens. Hallelujah. Say the God that I serve. Closes and opens wombs. He is going to open your womb in this October. Hallelujah. 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 This is not a month of God closing things. It's a month of God opening things which are closed. Hallelujah. Say this is a month of open doors. I don't know how, how long your doors have been closed. For some of us, doors have been closed for more than three decades or four decades. But I came to decree that whatever is closed in your life, today it is opening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the wrong things, the negative forces which have been open in your life, today they are closing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who or what closed your situations. Who or what closed your career from moving forward? The spirit of Jesus today is here. Hallelujah. The spirit of Jesus today is here to open any closed door in your life, any closed womb in your life. I am here to tell you by the word of God, fear not, only believe. Because God is opening your career today. God is opening your life today. God is opening your spiritual life. You may be tired of living a sinful life. You may be asking yourself, how will I continue like this? I need Jesus to move in my life. Today you are under an open heaven in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Hallelujah. Therefore she wept and did not she wept and did not eat. I actually omitted verses there. Verse 6. I omitted verse 6. Let me read it. And their rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. And because, of the, because God is involved in your situation, there are people who may be provoking you, people who may be laughing at you, Today I am here to tell you that you don't need to wish those who are laughing at you dead. But you just need to wait upon the Lord. Because we are entering a season when God is opening wombs. When God is opening careers. When God is opening all closed doors. Hallelujah. I don't know what they closed in a, in a satanistic coffin. Or in a, in a ceremony to commemorate evil spirits. The Spirit of God is saying today, today your doors are open in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say my doors are open. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten husbands? I know there are, there are people or circumstances which have been trying to comfort you. But because you know deep in your heart that you are not at your breakthrough, that's why you have not been comforted. Hallelujah. So that you can be brought closer to God. That terrible situation that you have been going through, God has allowed it so that it can bring you closer to his presence. And because now you are in his presence, definitely you are moving forward. Say, I am moving forward. 
Say, I am moving forward. I am moving forward. Say, my life is moving forward. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Hannah arose. After they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts. If you will remember, look on the affliction of your maid servant, and remember me and not forget your maid servant. But you will give your maid servant a male child or a son. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Say supplication. You was praying for a personal need, but because she was sensitive to the Spirit of God, she ended up decoding that God at a greater need. In your need, there is an even greater need of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why God had to look for a specific woman, because a womb, it was because God wanted to bring a Samuel. You don't just bring a Samuel anyhow. A Samuel is a, is, is a product of supplication. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why in Zimbabwe, when you are looking at our situation, it's as if the womb opened and then it, it's as if it closes again. It's because the Samuel that God wants to be born in this nation, it's a, it's a Samuel that will come out of supplication. Hallelujah. God is looking for a, a group of believers who will occupy the position of Anna, who will do the ministry of supplication, who will weep before the Lord for our nation. Hallelujah. This country does not need many activists because in any case, if you become an activist, they will simply put you in prison. But I know the kind of activist that cannot be put in prison. It's the one that goes to their prayer closet and they do supplication like, like Hannah. They do supplication like Daniel, who for three weeks he was supplicating for the nation of Israel until they decided to enact a law to ban prayer. Hallelujah. They had to ban prayer during the time of Daniel. Not, not because many people were praying, but because Daniel was doing a lot, lot of havoc in the realms of the spirit by his prayer life. I decree to you that as the spirit of God moves in this place and we occupy our proper domain by the spirit of God, you and I we are entering into a dangerous domain of supplicating until things are right in this nation. Whatever is not of God, is going to be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is not of Jesus, it is being uprooted right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not living in a period where you should be waiting for others to fix the situation in this nation. I tell you, you have got a powerful weapon in your voice to rectify things which are wrong in this country. Say, I've got a powerful weapon. In my voice. Yes, Hannah used her voice. Because the Bible says she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli washed her mouth. She prayed to such an extent that she ran out of words. She ran out of her voice to project to the Lord. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Even if they are not hearing your voice, God is hearing you. Amen. Say, God is hearing me. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. Maybe people have heard you in your home praying, and they think you are becoming crazy because of problems that you are going through. I am here to encourage your faith that keep at it. Look at your neighbor and say, Keep at it. Say, Keep at it. Look at them and tell them, Do not give up. Hallelujah. Tell them God is listening to you. 
Say, God is listening to you. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I don't know who here is literally a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've got good news for you. God has got an answer for a woman of a sorrowful spirit. Even if you are a man of sorrowful spirit, God has got an answer for you. I sense in my heart that there are people of sorrowful spirit. The world has failed to answer them. Your, your, your family has failed to answer you. But the spirit of Jesus is in this place to meet you at your point of need. God knows that you are of sorrowful spirit. Say he is meeting me at my point of need. Say he is meeting me at my point of need. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we are taught to pretend before God. To pretend that things are right when they are not right. Jesus Christ did not pretend. You will see from the passage of scripture that I am going to read after this one. When Jesus Christ was supplicating at Gethsemane. He was not busy pretending before God. You will hear his words. Hallelujah. You have to tell God, if your heart is sorrowful, you have to pour it out to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Today God is saying, he is looking for those who will pour out their hearts unto God. When you pour out your heart unto God, I see God beginning to move in your life. Even as we are beginning October, I see God beginning to move in a mighty way in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 16. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I've spoken until now. So she was not pretending making positive confessions before God. She was telling God her problem as it is. She was pouring out her sorrow. She was pouring out her grief. She was pouring out her complaint. She actually says, out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. God listens to complaint. God listens to grief. Because the problems that we go through are genuine. Hallelujah. The problems that you are going through are genuine. Maybe some among us here, you have got a life-threatening sickness within your body. I am here to tell you that I, as your fellow brother or fellow human being, I may not have a solution, but God in heaven, Jesus Christ in heaven, he has a solution for your problem. You need to pour out your soul unto the almighty God. And he will begin to move in your situation. He will begin to heal that situation because he is a healer. Once a healer, always a healer. Hallelujah. 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 Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maid servant find favor in your sight. This is a woman of faith. So when you are involved in the ministry of supplication, in prayer you must be a person of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, Do you have any faith? Ask them again, do you have any faith? Answer them because they were asking you a question. Say, I have faith, I have faith. in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Christ of Nazareth. Say, I've got, I've got faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Christ of Nazareth. Then they saw so the woman went, went her way and ate. Her face was no longer set. Her face was no longer said on the strength of a spoken word. I am looking for someone as I'm speaking these spoken words. Who is going to grab hold of the spoken word? And you tell yourself I'm no longer said God is meeting me at my point of need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. And retained and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife. And the Lord remembered her. Say, the Lord is remembering me. I'm going to end at verse 20. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived 
and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I, I have asked him from the Lord. Hallelujah. So in verse 19 and verse 20, we see that God did something. Say God did something. It is not mentioned, but we see from the results that the fruits of prayer were produced in verse 19 and in verse 20. The Bible only tells us of a verse where God had closed the womb of the woman. It doesn't tell us when the womb is opened, but it's obvious that when the man of God, when Eli, the priest in Israel, released a spoken word, and Hannah believed it, her, her womb was opened at that time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, my womb is open. This woman is an example of supplication. She's an example of supplication. She's an example of supplication. Hallelujah. Say, oh Lord Jesus, I thank you for your goodness. Because today you are touching my life. Let us go to Matthew. Because I don't want to make the sermon long. I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Say, oh Lord Jesus. I thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 26, from verse 36 to verse 44. Matthew chapter 26, from verse 36 to verse 44. It says, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Hallelujah. Then he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. I said, in this church fellowship, we are allowed to be sorrowful before God. Hallelujah. It's wrong to pretend in the presence of God that everything is okay when you need God to heal your spiritual life. Hallelujah. When I'm praying, the reason why I don't pray in public is because when the Holy Spirit moves upon me to cry, I cry. When the Holy Spirit moves upon me to groan, I groan. When the Holy Spirit moves upon me to, to roll on the ground, I roll on the ground. When the Holy Spirit moves upon me to kneel, I kneel. When the Holy Spirit moves upon me to be distressed, I become distressed. Who am I copying? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When he was faced with the problems, even though he was the son of God, he didn't pre pretend before God the Father. I know we have been taught that when you come to God, you know you must be strong. Uh, when you come to, because if you pretend that you are strong, when you are actually weak, you are going to be, you, your weakness will be exposed elsewhere. It is not wrong to expose your weakness, your sorrowfulness, and your groaning before God because he's our heavenly father. Hallelujah. Say, God is my heavenly father. The one that we are reading about is the founder of Christianity. All these churches that you see around, whenever you move around, you see a church. The person who founded all these churches that exist, and the churches that existed in the past, is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But look at the description of Jesus. Because intercession is not a, a set of formulas. I will not tell you formulas. I mean when it comes to intercession. Intercession is a ministry which is led by the Spirit of God. You flow with the flow of the Spirit of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no step number one, two, three. You will not hear me telling you step number one, two, three. I will just give you examples in the Bible. In actual fact, today I will just dwell on Jesus and Hannah. Hallelujah. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Not just sorrowful, deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul. I, I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Because Jesus is unlike our pastors. Our pastors, you never know that something wrong is going on in their lives. Until you hear they are dead. Hallelujah. Amen. I love Jesus. Say I love Jesus. I love Jesus. 
Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Pastors are very good at pretending, especially if the church becomes a large congregation. They are very good at pretending. The pastor will be having cancer. Instead of mobilizing maybe the 100,000 members to pray for him so that he can be healed of cancer, he would rather die with that cancer quiet. I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. Because Jesus Christ, you know, the apostles were not only his disciples. They were his creatures. He's the one who created them. But he confessed to them in his moment of weakness. Because Jesus Christ had moments of weakness. I didn't say sin. I said weakness. There was a time when he couldn't carry his cross. And this cross was carried by Simon of Cyrene. An African had to carry the cross for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He didn't pretend that he was strong. I mean, he allowed someone to carry his cross for him. I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. God today is going to touch those who are genuine. If you came here to put up a, a mask, to put up a face, the Holy Spirit will move, but he may not touch you. But if you came here once and all, and you are willing to expose yourself in the presence of God, I am here to tell you that the Spirit of God is touching you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Stay here and watch with me. He told them, my soul is sorrowful. He didn't say, you know, uh, we are facing a trial, you know. <laughs> we are facing a trial. It's a trying situation. I, I need to, to tarry a bit in prayer. You know, I need to separate myself to the Lord. He didn't come up with the, all sorts of funny phrases to explain that he is sorrowful. He told them, I am exceedingly sorrowful. We never hear of pastors' families when something is going wrong. We only hear that the pastor is divorced. In the meantime, we don't know what was going on all along. And the congregation of 1 million members or 10,000 members could have prayed for the pastor. If somehow the pastor could have told them without divulging secrets of his home that you, you, I need you to pray for me. If, if the pastor comes and he says, I need you to pray for me, there are challenges that I'm going through without even explaining. Some, some brethren, by the Holy Spirit, they will pick it in this, by the Spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they will intercede for him or her. You hear that a pastor or a, a, a sister that appeared to be very strong, all of a sudden has backslidden because they were putting on a show. It's Christ to, uh, Christian life is not for putting on a show. It's for us to be genuine. If you put on a show, people will only hear that you have fallen. Why? Because the termites of sin were eating you up from inside. You know when a tree is eaten by termites from within, the only thing which you hear is when it is falling, when a wind comes. A small wind, not even a big wind. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you genuine before God? Amen. Say, are you genuine before God? Genuine before. Say, are you genuine before God? Genuine before. Say, are you genuine before God? Genuine. Jesus Christ was genuine before his apostle. Just imagine, not even before God. He told these apostles, my, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. I'm here to research what that statement means, to say I am exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Maybe if we put it in modern language, I feel so sorrowful that I, I feel as if I'm dying. This is Jesus. Say, this is Jesus. Say, this is Jesus. Say, this is Jesus. If things are not moving, don't pretend they are moving. Faith is not denial of reality. It is confronting reality with the word of God. Hallelujah. Faith is not denial of reality. It is facing reality with the word of God. Say, oh, Holy Spirit. May you assist me to be genuine this afternoon. 
Hallelujah. God is ready to move upon your life. He is ready to move upon our lives. We need to open our hearts to him. Just like what Jesus Christ did. Let me conclude this matter. Hallelujah. Say, oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. I, desire like I desire to be like you. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Even unto death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That statement alone, it shows, it explains what he was feeling. A moment came when he was praying and when he was seeing that the deal had been sealed, that he is going to the cross. That he said, Father, if it is possible, this kind of suffering that I'm seeing on the cross, if it is possible, let it pass. Yet let, let not my will be done, but your will be done. There was a time when Jesus Christ was supposed to do something or to enter into something, and he felt like this is just too much. If the problem that you are going through, you are feeling it is too much, you are not alone. There was a time when Jesus Christ entered into his suffering, what is called the passion of the Christ. And in that passion of the Christ, he suffered. And he leaned upon God. He leaned upon the strength of God. You need to lean upon the strength of God this day. And God is going to support you. Say God is supporting my position. Luke chapter 22. Say, I lean upon you, almighty God. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of the Olives. As he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he had come to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed. It's the same incident. I want us to see another dimension of that incident. Hallelujah. Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. After Jesus prayed those words, an angel appeared to him to strengthen him so that he could go through his suffering. God is going to strengthen you by his angel. Hallelujah. The same angel that strengthened Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he is strengthening you to fulfill your divine assignment. And right now you are being strengthened by the Spirit of the Almighty God. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. And he, when he rose up from prayer, and they come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. He, flung, he found them sleeping from what? From sorrow. It's not only Jesus who had sorrow. Even his apostles had sorrow. Now, the Bible says the church is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. The apostles had sorrow, Jesus had sorrow. And Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1, is the chief apostle, the cornerstone of the church. All of them were sorrowful as the foundation of the church. At one moment they were sorrowful. When they were confronting adversity, they didn't pretend all was okay. Because if you do that, it damages your health. Sometimes you need to release what you feel inside. I feel that today there is an anointing which is going to release some of us. I don't know what painful thing you have been going through. God is going to release you. Jesus Christ sweated until his sweat was like great drops of blood. He was releasing himself before God to the Father. Let me conclude with the Hebrews. Say, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus. I want to be like you. Be like you. Say, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, I want to be like you. I, like you. I know nowadays a lot of Christians, they want to be like their spiritual father or spiritual mother. But today I came to present Christ. To say all of us, we must long to be like Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Because those who are going to be raptured, who will go to heaven, are those who, will be, who would have been conformed to the image of Jesus in this life. The Bible says in 1 John, when he appears, we are going to be like him. Hallelujah. When he appears, we are not going to be like Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. When he appears, we are not going to be like Martin Luther. When he appears, we are not going to be like some major prophet or major apostle somewhere. But when he appears, we shall be like him. Because every day we are being conformed to his image. And Jesus Christ did not pretend. When things were bankrupt, he told his disciples, here things are just about to be bankrupt. Hallelujah. He released himself. Hallelujah. Actually, if you read in Matthew, you will discover that at a certain point when he was hanging on the cross, he actually cried out with a loud voice and said, Eli, Eli, lama sabagatan. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Just imagine the miracle worker confessing that God has forsaken him. If Jesus was one of us, maybe a big man of God who doesn't want people to know that there is a weak sign, there is nothing which is just strong everywhere. Even iron, which appears strong, it is weaker than mercury because when, when oxidation and the moisture comes, it begins to rust. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There is nothing and there is no one who is just a bundle of strength without weaknesses. We may not know your weaknesses, but definitely they are there in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord Jesus, expose my weaknesses. And correct them this afternoon. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ exposed himself to God the Father. Not only to God the Father, even to the apostles. He told them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Or oh, I am feeling so much sorrow like I, 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 I feel like I'm dying. Not I feel like dying, no. I feel like I'm dying. Because of the sorrow. He had never experienced such sorrow. He was just about to be separated from God the Father for the first time in his entire life. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, God loves me. God loves me. Say, God loves me. God loves me. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. That is where I'm going to conclude. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with the vehement what? Christ. With the vehement what? Christ. Ukuklavalala umkosi omkur. Aikon ukuklav umkosi kupel. Ukuklavalala umkosi omkur. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tears. Vehement cries and tears. To him who was able to save him. From death. And was yet because of his godly fear. Though he was a son yet he learned obedience. By the things which he suffered. And having been perfected he became the author. Of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was yet because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How many people are following Jesus? Say, I, I, am, following Jesus I am following Jesus for the rest of my life. Now, let us look at the person whom we are following. The Bible says, where I read that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Not the things which he enjoyed. Definitely was not enjoying on the cross. 
One way or the other, you may not go to a physical cross like Jesus. But the situation, that situation which you are failing to change in your life, it is like a cross. And God is busy teaching you obedience by the things which you suffer. Because if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, the Bible, my Bible tells me that the moment our affliction or suffering is working for us an eternal weight of what? Of glory. Let us stand in the presence of God. I want you to pray. To open up your heart to God. I can't open up your heart. I can only open up my own heart. I want us to be genuine before God and we pray. For God to touch us. To move upon our life situations. The spirit of God is here to assist us.